Landboards presents Retrocomputing using FPGAs Part 2 The board used is a Altera part. It's a Cyclone 2 EP2 C5 mini development board. If you search eBay for the phrase EP2 C5 FPGA board, you should get back quite a few hits. I paid a little bit less than $14 for the card that I bought on eBay. Here's a picture of the card, and let's look at some of the functions provided with the card. Of course, at the very center of the card is the FPGA itself. Power for the card is supplied into a standard wall wart style jack, but take careful note, the power has to be 5 volts, not 9 volts. The programmer plugs into the JTAG connector to put the program down into the FPGA temporarily. The active serial connector, AS connector, is for programming the part permanently. The card has four 2 by 14one inch pitch connectors that have all the I.O. connectors and power and ground on them. There's the 3.3 volt DC regulator used to power the I.O. connections on the part. Note, the I.O. is not 5 volt or 5 volt tolerant. And although you see four corner standoffs in our card, they're not included with it. The standoffs we're using are 2.5 millimeter standoffs from a Raspberry Pi. Here's the bottom of the board. In the center you can see the 50 megahertz oscillator. Uh, U3 above that is the E squared prom that stores the configuration data when you plug into the AS connector and lower to the bottom right is the logic internal logic voltage regulator. You'll also need a USB blaster to program the card and these are pretty inexpensive on eBay. A convenient way to get the 5 volt power you need is to buy one of these USB ports to 5.5 millimeter, 2.1 millimeter, 5 volt barrel, barrel jack power connectors on eBay. I think I paid a buck for this one. Here's the card all hooked up and ready to program. Thanks for watching our video. If you liked it, please like, comment, and subscribe.